What is going on, people of the internet? Hyper Chaotic here with the K double R, and welcome back, or welcome if this is your first time visiting my channel and Chaotic's collection. This series where I will be looking at any and all collectibles as well as going over information on said collectibles, which I will be going over the information first before we ever look at any collectibles. And today, guys, I have another article going over some more coin errors. Where we last left off with the previous article, I actually finished the final error category from the previous article, which we will eventually revisit that article again when I decide to go over the variety coin categories. But for now, I want to finish hunting down all the types of coin errors that can be on all coins in general. In general. So until I finish hunting down every list of coin error out there in general and do a video on it, I will not stop going over coin errors and go over more information until then. And if by any chance you end up watching any of my videos and there's a coin error that I do not mention, let me know in the comment section down below and I may mention it in a future video. Now, I'm primarily for the most part focused on hunting down all circulated coin errors. But if I stumble onto the information, I am also looking for any uncirculated proof coin errors as well as possible metal and bullion mints made errors. But until then, I'm only just going to focus on the circulated coin errors. However, as of recently, I have found out about two types of proof and uncirculated coin errors. Now, I will mention those in a future video once I'm done going over all circulated coin errors. But I, I am aware of two types of proof and uncirculated coin errors that I do plan on going over in the future. And hopefully by then, by the time I get to that video, I will have found more errors for proof and uncirculated coins. And if I find any for bullion and metals as well, I will include it in that video. Anyways, this article today comes from Spruce Crafts, which apparently does quite a few things as far as collectibles, but recently they have been popping up in my search results for coins um, for all types of stuff between types of coins to collect what co rare and variety coins to look out um, to this list of coin errors that I found as well as more information on coin anatomy which we will have a revisit to coin, coin anatomy soon more on that in a bit but this article of course comes from spruce crafts and we're not going to go over every single error listed in this article in this article because a I've already went over plenty of them in the previous article in previous videos and B there's some more information we got to go over on at least two types of ears in this list that we will go over more on in a another article that I found when doing research for images um, for this video for more example images which before I forget um, if you do want to visit this article for yourself, I will leave a link in the description down below. But be advised, guys, this article does not have any example images whatsoever. So any of the images that you will be seeing up on screen will be images I found on Google. And I can assure you these images are images of the errors I am going over. But again, if you do want to visit the article for yourself, link in the description down below with any other source. But this image, uh, the, sorry, this article, unlike the previous article, does not contain any example images whatsoever. All images that you will see will be provided by my research on Google. As for this third article, we're only going to use it as an extra source to go into further uh, detail and information on one error. But in a future video, we will revisit that article soon because it actually has more details on more errors. And hopefully once we're done going over those errors, unless I end up finding out any more, that should be the final and complete set of errors left to go over. And once we go over those errors, 
hopefully we'll have a complete list of all coin eaters in general at least for circulated coins by then we'll see what happens with uncirculated coins proof coins bullions and metals now even though i'm not gonna go into this article this third article in this video and not into another video I will still leave a link to it in the description down below. And for anybody who has been seeing the descriptions, I have been leaving some links to some recommended coin tubers. In fact, this website, this third article, web slash website that I visited, that I'm going to use a little bit of information for this video and go over in another video in the future, actually comes from one of these recommended coin tubers because he's actually a full blown expert, a professional coin collector, numismatist, and a, a bit of an uh, expert coin grader as well. So if you do want to learn more information about coins and coin collecting, errors, coin anatomy, and just all of that, just all of that, definitely check out his website, check out his YouTube channel. They will be in the link. Uh, be a link in the description down below. In fact, I'm probably gonna continue on to keep linking this channel in my descriptions in these videos just for the fact that he's a good recommended coin tuber to check out to learn more on just coin collecting in general and numismatics. Or I'm sorry, numismatics. And since now I am aware of his website, I will be linking his website as well for now on. And in the future, I actually plan on doing a video going over some more recommended coin content creators to check out on multiple platforms. YouTube, TikTok, BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, and well, anywhere else if I can find any more coin content creators on other platforms. But those are the main ones on my list. With that said, that's enough of a uh, heads up of what's going to coming uh, soon let's just get into this article already and get into some coin errors okay starting off with our look with our first error missing edge lettering which and I'm just kind of adding this on as my own little thing as a thing that I coined um, we can also consider it uh, uh, in another name missing edge design because when it comes to coins all types of coins have different types of designs on their edges now missing edge lettering coins that are supposed to have lettering on the edge is missing this is more so prevalent on presidential dollars in the case of u.s coins i can't say too much for other foreign currencies but in the case of u.s coins dollar coins are the only ones that have lettering on their edge so if there's no lettering that's a missing edge lettering error but in the case of any other coin I, you would probably just refer to it as missing edge designs because whatever design is supposed to be on that specific coin simply is missing now different types of coins can have different types of uh edgings reeded edges grooved edges Plenty of more edges that I should probably go over in the future, which is why I said earlier in the video, we will be revisiting coin anatomy in the future. So we can go over these other types of coin edges. Now these other types of coin edges aren't on American coins. The only types of edges on American coins are plain edges, reeded edges, uh, lettering edges, and I think only in the case of commemorative coins, decorated edges. Because you don't really see too many decorated edged coins in circulation. Typically in circulation it's just plain edge, reeded edge, uh, lettering edge in the case of dollar coins. So any coin missing the proper designs on its edge, that's a missing edge design error. In the case of plain coins, well they're supposed to be plain so anything that is on the edge that's not supposed to be there since it's supposed to be plain would just be considered an edge error then. Uh, probably a crack in the collar or something like that because well they're supposed to be plain there's not supposed to be any designs on it whatsoever i'm not sure what else you would nickname that error but we'll just call it an edge error collar error collar break collar crack anyways moving on to the next error fold over 
strikes. A planchet is fed into the coin and press in the vertical position and to get struck on its edge instead of on its surface. So yeah, it literally gets struck on the edge of the coin, the edge of the planchet, and will fold over the coin. Sometimes just a little bit, it might still flatten the coin enough to where it probably gets some of, if not most of the detail on the faces of the coin, or it'll fold it completely and only get like half, half of the front face and half of the back face on each folded side. Now, at one point in time, I actually did uh, find one of these fold over coins when I was young, probably in my preteens to early teen years. And I really wish I knew about this coin information back then because I just, um, I found it on the ground, looked at it, thought that it was interesting, wonder how the hell that happened and immediately threw it away. I wish I was bullshitting, ladies and gentlemen. I threw away what could have been a very valuable coin. Because I looked at it, said it was fucked up, and thought it was worth nothing. Turns out, as I find out many years later, it's the fucked up coins that are worth a lot of money. Son of a bitch! Transitional errors. When the mint changes from one metallic composition to another and a previous planchet with the old composition ends up getting struck as a newly dated coin. Now I will leave a link in the description down below to a video going over some examples of transitional era coins. But as it says, when they start making coins out of a new metal composition, a new sheet metal composition, um, if they have any left over from the previous stuff, you know, they'll just use it. Might as well. If we have some leftovers. It'll save us on some uh, money on more material. Might as well use it. So because of that, during certain transitional period years, there will be some coins out there that are of the same year, but they'll either be made out of silver or nickel or copper versus zinc but they'll be from the same year because they just happen to have a little bit of copper or silver composition sheet metals left over. I will also leave a link in the description down below to a video um, comparing uh, silver coins versus uh, nickel coins and copper coins versus zinc coins. Uh, more on its uh, details, but most importantly, uh, its weight. Because the best way to tell uh, whether or not a, a coin is silver or nickel or copper and zinc is just the weight. Even though it's the same size, the two different metals will have uh, a different density. Now, although the main uh, types of transitional metal coins you want to look for would probably be the uh, silver and copper ones. There's also the cases of zinc coated steel pennies that you wanna look, uh, look out for. Yes, you heard that correctly. Zinc coated steel pennies. They're also apparently worth something. So keep a lookout for that. Again, the best way to tell is really just measuring it. You, you might be able to tell by looking at it, but you really gotta train yourself to do that. Otherwise, to an untrained eye, you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. So the best way to tell the difference between a, a penny that's zinc or copper or a nickel dime quarter that's nickel or silver is just to weigh it, put it on a little scale. Double and triple struck. The coin is struck multiple times. Now, I, I've already went over this error but I'm just going over it one more time for a specific reason, which is going to be the next era. But double, triple strike, you can just call it a multi-strike. Die adjustment. 
the coin is struck with not enough pressure due to the coin press operator adjusting the machine. Also known as a weak strike, but it's known as a die adjustment strike or die adjustment strike coin because of the fact that the machine was being adjusted and it didn't get that proper pressure. Now, once these coins got struck, that's it. They move on and the next coin gets struck once the machine has been operated the sorry the machine has been readjusted to the proper settings now if these coins did get struck again then well it would have just been a multi-strike coin but they didn't get struck again they're just a weekly struck coin and the details on the coin pretty much look kind of faded almost like a worn out coin because the way the machine works is it presses down on the coin, uh, on the quote unquote field of the coin, which raises the metal that gets into the grooves of the die. It gets into the grooves and raises that metal as the field is pressured down. But because there wasn't enough pressure, it doesn't properly raise the metal all the way. And you have this fading detail that looks like a worn out coin. And our next and final error for this video is struck fragments. Metal fragments from various sources can end up in the coin press and get struck with the coin design. So these can be anywhere from extra uh, leftover metal pieces from the composition sheet metal to broken planchets and pieces of other coins literally just getting struck with the details and somehow they end up in circulation now sometimes they, they, these struck fragments could also be struck on another coin and you have this coin piece or piece of metal that is stuck onto the coin but that's known as a different type of ear. Struck fragments are literally just coin fragments. They're broken coins that were struck. They were broken before they were struck. And then they got struck. So these were broken, defective planchets, as they're known as, that ended up getting struck and sent out into circulation. And because a lot of them could be much smaller than the actual coin they should have been, they could be much harder to find. And, you know, that's why the mint doesn't send them back, you know, through the process again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been our final coin error for this video. Now, there was one more I did want to go over, but we're going to save that for uh, the future video when I get into this or, uh, other third article. Which we're going to go ahead and get into that right now because we're going to go into a little bit more on struck fragments. And this article is actually going to show you different examples of different types of struck fragment coins. Well, you know, they're not really a whole coin, they're just chunks of struck metal. But, well, for the sake of simplicity, these are examples of different types of struck fragment coins. All right, now, as you can see here, each of these various examples are each basically named uh, like a different variation of bow ties because of the way they look, uh, with the exception of one or two. Anyways, all of these but one example that is on screen uh, is on this website. The one that is not on this website is the half coin. I'm not sure why, but there's not really much of a nickname you can give, you know, in this era other than just half coin fragment. That's really it. But they do come in half coins as well. I think they're much more rare, which is why I guess there's not really an example on this page. How even looking up fragment coins, I only managed to find like two or three half coins. The rest are just like, well, the other examples up on screen. Oh, and uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, remember when I said I had a folded coin and threw it away because I thought it was worthless? I, I think you know where I'm going with this. Yes, I also found a fragmented coin, and I threw it away. Please do not make the same mistake as me, people. Just take a look on eBay. Macari, any other place you can order coins, auctions, a local coin shop near you, and see how much certain coins or coin pieces will go for. Nowadays, when people are tied on mon uh, uh, ugh. Mm. what the hell was? <laughs> Nowadays, when people are tight on money, I don't even know what that was. <laughs> Nowadays, when people are tight on money. There, there's nothing more than a good cash out to help you get by. So, keep a lookout for certain era coins. Because there's some good cash in your pocket. All because of one single coin. Now, I'm going to be honest. I, myself, have yet to cash in anything. But... I'm going based off of the experience and, and knowledge of many other coin tubers and just coin collectors before me and passing it on to you. Do not miss out on a little bit of money in your pocket all because of one coin. I mean, that's a little bit of money already in your pocket, but a little bit more money starting off with one coin or banknote. But uh, I haven't gone over banknote viewers yet. I do eventually plan on going over banknotes. But first, I got a lot of information to finish on coins alone before we even touch banknotes. And as I've said before in some previous videos, we have to touch on some VHS tapes real quickly first. So it's going to be a while till we get to banknotes. But we will eventually get to pay notes. With that said, this is the end of the video. And I will see you guys soon when we revisit Spruce Crafts for uncirculated and proof coin errors. Maybe hopefully some bullying and metal ears as well. A revisit to Coin Anatomy, also brought to you by Spruce Crafts. And in a future video, when we finally finish off the remaining circulated coin ears or hopefully finally finish them off in this next upcoming article or website which again I'm going to link in the description down below all three of them the spruce crafts one this US auction coin help one and the previous article I went over as well as the recommended coin tuber links that I have in the description down below which I've been linking in my previous video and I'm going to continue linking from now on and I, I, I did say this earlier right I'm already forgetting what I said earlier in the video very beginning but if I did say this and I will eventually do a video um, going on ugh, going over some more recommended coin tubers um, or even some bullying tubers as well if I can uh, find a few. Actually, uh, there is one guy on BitChute, and I think I'll link him in the description down below just because, who does talk about the prices of silver and gold and platinum, and does touch on, touch on balloons. But yeah, in the future I will do a video going on, uh, going over some recommended coin and bullying content creators on YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, and TikTok. 
yes, and we're going to go through all, all through the, these platforms. Till then, leave a like if this was helpful. Maybe if you learned something new. If not, leave a dislike and a comment telling me why. Any and all interaction is good interaction for my channel and the algorithm. And any and all criticism can help me get better. Until we eventually get to those projects. See you guys next time. Take care. Chaotic out.